Thank you, last Karen Corla. <clears throat> The rising cost of living, and in particular the cost of food, is an incredibly serious issue affecting households across Ireland. I want to thank uh, Deputy Curran and Sinn Féin um, for the opportunity to discuss this important matter and for the practical and considered solution that they're offering. Rising energy costs, skyrocketing rents, childcare more expensive than mortgages, families forced to pay for expensive private healthcare because public services are practically non-existent, these are all contributing to the cost of living crisis. Recent research from Permanent TSB has found that over 60% of people feel they will have to cut back on food spending in the coming year due to the cost of living crisis. Social Justice Ireland has shown that when housing costs are counted, almost one in five people in Ireland are living in poverty. This is the perfect storm. Decades of underinvestment in state services by successive Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael governments, combined with the failure to tackle the housing crisis, have left households exposed. Now the energy crisis and the looming food crisis have pushed very many people to breaking point. It's important to acknowledge the steps taken by government, reduction in excise duty supported by most of the dole, cuts to public transport fees and approved drugs payment scheme are all welcome. But in many cases, these and others met other measures such as social welfare increases were so long overdue anyway. The Social Democrats have repeatedly proposed measures such as the ban of rent increases, increase in the national minimum wage, 300 refundable tax credit to those in incomes below 50,000 and a further increase in core social welfare rates. Families need temporary measures to address the current crisis, but more substantially they need a fundamental reform of our state services to address the real issues underlying cost of living. We are in desperate need of a government that will tackle housing, childcare and healthcare costs, including disabilities and long-term illnesses. If we want to improve people's quality of life and put money back into people's pockets, then there must be a comprehensive and strategic approach to addressing the chronic deficits that exist in our public services. In our alternative budget, we propose the concept of universal basic services and the idea that everyone is entitled to a range of public services that are free at the point of use. In progressive societies, there is a minimum standard of living below which nobody should fall. This is the social contract. In return for the rates of tax people pay, the very least they should expect is a decent level of public service. Sick and elderly people should be able to get a bed in a public hospital. Children with disabilities should get the therapies they desperately need. Families should have affordable childcare. All communities should have access to affordable and frequent public transport. These are basic standards the least people should expect. Due to continued underinvestment, understaffing and dependence on families or private means, our state services are so insufficient, which makes life more expensive for ordinary people every day. Rent, medical expenses, education costs, childcare, they all underlie the co current cost of living crisis. To ease the burden on households, there must be a new approach to public services. The housing and rental crisis is getting worse, adding increasing financial and psychological burdens onto already hard-pressed families. The number of people in emergency accommodation surpassed 10,000 in April, including almost 3,000 children. In reality, we know the homeless figures are even higher. In the past eight years, house prices have doubled, growing by more than 12% in the past year alone. Rents have also doubled in a decade, decade while housing costs have skyrocketed. We're seeing a growing number of people stuck renting who would like to be able to afford to buy their own home. We're seeing house prices about to reach record levels, surpassing their Celtic Tiger peak. Home ownership levels are in free fall under this government and home ownership among adults at prime working age between 25 and 54 has collapsed. That's according to the Parliamentary Budget Office. Young people and families are being priced out of a rental market and home ownership is a pipe dream for many. The government response has been wholly inadequate. Renters cannot continue to pay more and more. We have some of the highest rents in the European Union that are a major cost to individuals and families and also of significant economic cost. We need a radical increase in the supply of cost rent and affordable homes to meet housing needs of people as well as a ban on rent increases and improvements in security of tenure for renters. Childcare costs range on average from 800 euro to 1,350 euro per month per child. 
This often forces a parent, invariably the mother, to reduce or leave employment. At the same time, childcare workers are very poorly paid and retention in the sector is extremely difficult. The problem stems from underinvestment in children by successive governments for decades. Core funding for early uh, for learning and care and school-going children is so inadequate, families have to sacrifice and sacrifice just to get by. We know that the state spends just 0.3% of GDP on early years, which is well below the European average of 0.8% and the UNICEF recommended benchmark of 1%. We all know that this underinvestment is felt most acutely by one-parent families and those in disadvantage. This underinvestment is not only a substantial component in the cost of living for young families, but it perpetuates inequality. The cost of living is even higher for disabled people. The government's own report, The Cost of Disability in Ireland, revealed that people with disabilities face extra costs of up to €12,300 annually on transport, fuel, equipment, aids, medical expenses and much more. As a result, Ireland has one of the highest rates of poverty and social exclusion for disabled people in the EU. Progressing disability services is failing children and families. Waiting lists for assessments and therapies, private services are the only hope of interventions for some families. This forces parents to make impossible financial choices and sacrifices, while for others it is simply not an option and they can only stand by as their child is literally de denied vital therapies and supports. Those with the means to pay for it privately do so, and those who cannot afford it are just left on those never-ending waiting lists. The situation is no different for adults with disabilities. The Ombudsman report criticising personal transport supports described the available scheme as inadequate, unfair and inequitable. This failure increases social isolation while also reducing employment opportunities. There is a need for targeted social health interventions to enable disabled people to live independent lives. This motion's uh, focus on food is incredibly important. Too often it's forgotten that food is a matter of public policy, just like the likes of education, transport, housing. The availability of food, its cost and quality is all shaped by government and EU policy. Food prices are rising, this hits all households, and we're seeing more families having to turn to food banks. These fantastic organisations provide vital work, but they are indicative of the poverty faced by so many people. Parents are forgoing meals to ensure their children are fed. Families are cutting back on groceries to pay rent. This is deeply worrying, it is simply wrong, and it is incredibly unhealthy. The least we should expect from a wealthy country is that all people should have access to sufficient, healthy food. Our current food system benefits larger processors and retail giants, not normal people and certainly not producers. While food prices are rising, producers are not making more. Small farmers, inshore fishers and small producers are barely getting by. Annually, the government spends hundreds of millions subsidising food production. But how much of that actually benefits farmers or consumers? We're all aware of cartel-like practices in some areas of the agricultural sector. Farmers are entirely dependent on processors and factories for prices which often bear no relationship with production costs. A food system which respects farmers and fishers and helps consumers access healthy foods produced as locally as possible benefits ordinary people at both ends of the process, farmers and consumers. For too long, large retailers and processors have controlled the sector, setting prices, changing contracts and simply operating for their gain only. Food is fundamental, it is a basic need which shapes our health and well-being. We need much greater regulation of our food system. We need fair prices for food producers and affordability for families. This motion for a proposed cost of living cash payment is a practical and much needed intervention. It would help to alleviate the burdens on families and ordinary people until we get a government that is willing to systematically take on vested interests and reform our state public services.